Thank you for joining us today on this Legs Matter Natter. Um, unfortunately, my colleague Kate, Katie Bird can't be with us today, but I've got Sarah Gardner with me to answer all your questions at the end of the session. So please put some questions in the chat and also on the question and answer box at the bottom. But we're looking forward to sharing some hints and tips on caring for your hosiery. So Kerry hopefully is going to start the video for us now. Thank you for joining me on this Legs Matter Natter. We're going to give you some hints and tips in caring for your compression garment. Always remember your healthcare professional has recommended that you wear your compression garment. We want it to deliver the compression that you've been prescribed by them and manage your lower limb condition. So it's really important that you attend regular checkups with your healthcare professional report any problems with the garment to them, and also if there's any changes in your condition. Adhere to the um, guidelines within your instruction booklet. This can be found in the box when you first get your garment, and it's a useful tool to um, use. Have a full read of it. It will guide you to caring for your garment. It'll give you tips on applying it, and it'll tell you any hints and tips and washing instructions for that garment that you've got. Another place to go is to look for the product care label. We're very familiar with looking for these in garments like our own clothing. They're there within our compression garments, so make sure you study that and understand what all the symbols mean. We're going to now offer you some hints and tips in caring for your compression garment. We're going to look at some hints for applying it, some hints and tips for washing it and wearing it and also replacing it. So let's look at some hints and tips for applying your compression. I can hear now that you're saying compression can be hard to put on. Well, let me offer you some hints and tips to help that um, process and make it a lot easier. We want your garment to be smooth against your limb. We don't want any wrinkles in your garment. So it's important that when you're applying it, you bear that in mind. We want to make sure that those wrinkles are smoothed out. A good tip for applying your compression garment is to use a simple pair of rubber gloves. That will allow you to grip the fabric and will allow you to move and reposition the fabric and also will help with those wrinkles. It's also good to think what you're actually wearing, say jewellery wise, Big rings, fingernails are also a challenge. When you're applying your garment, you don't want anything like that to damage the fabric. So remove those before applying your garment. It's really important to consider the time that you're putting your garment on. Your limb shape may well be smaller in the morning, so that's always a good time to apply your compression. Your healthcare professional will guide you to how often you need to remove your garment. It's common for compression garments to be worn all day and removed at night. However, get the advice from your healthcare professional. Some people wear nighttime compression and some are advised to wear them for much longer periods of time. Make sure that your garment is evenly distributed along your leg, as that will prevent any damage to your skin underneath. It is also really good to consider realigning your compression garment a few times in the day. To do this, just roll your garment down to the ankle and roll it back up. Don't be tempted to cut off any loops or any threads in the garment, as that can lead to holes and damage in the garment. Let's look now at tips in wearing your garment. As I've stressed, it's really important that your garment is evenly distributed along the limb. We want it to fit firmly, comfortably and flat on your leg. If it becomes tight or painful, or you feel any altered sensation or changes in your circulation, or any deterioration in any wounds, it's important that you remove your garment immediately and contact your healthcare professional straight away for advice. Never fold over the top of garments as that increases the pressure around that area. So it could cause some compression or a tourniquet above the knee. 
Think now, when you get out of the bath and you try and put your trousers or jeans on, it's more difficult. And that applies for your compression garment. So consider fitting it after bathing. Every healthcare professional goes on about the importance that you need to look after your skin. So we use emollients and moisturisers to do that. Your healthcare professional will guide you and prescribe those for you. Some of these can damage some fabrics, so it's always important to check in your instruction booklet and ask your healthcare professional for advice on using moisturisers. Also, moisturisers do make it more difficult to apply your garment, so it may be advisable to put that moisturiser on at night. Back to that care label that's so important. Find that care label. That will really guide you to your washing instructions. The symbols on the screen are really familiar to you for your own um, garments that we wear. We look to find these washing instructions within them. Some other tips for washing are, it's a good idea to have one garment to wash and one to wear. Compression garments should be washed daily to keep them clean and the hygiene elements to that garment. Make sure when you've washed them that you rinse them well. And it's important that we think about how we're going to dry these garments. So a good tip is to wash your garment and then obviously roll it in a household towel and press out any excess moisture. Don't be tempted to wring it out as that can damage the fibres and fabric. Never dry it in direct heat, allow it to naturally dry. Some garments can be washed in the machine, so again, check your individual items um, instructions for that. That will be clearly identified within the instruction booklet. Many can be washed in the washing machine at 30 to 40 degrees. The same for tumble drying, that will be clearly um, reported and documented within your compression garment label and also that instruction booklet. Some garments have a silicone band, so really pay attention to that. Hand wash it, make sure creams and excess hair is removed from that. Remember those symbols within the care label. Do not iron, do not dry clean the compression garment. So it's always important to think about replacing your compression garments. Make sure you attend those regular checkups with your healthcare professional. They will inform you how often you need your garment replacing. Report any problems with your garment. If it's loose and not fitting, make sure you report that immediately. They will guide you to when you need a new compression garment, as you may well need a reassessment of your condition and also you may need remeasuring and refitting, which needs to be carried out by a trained healthcare professional. Over time, your material fabric will loosen and your garment will no longer provide the compression that you have been prescribed and your limb needs. So it is therefore really important that your compression garment is replaced. In summary, I can't stress enough, work with your healthcare professional, get guidance from them. It's really important that your garment is comfortable and therefore it will deliver the effective level of compression that you've been prescribed. It will also maintain its lifespan um, and it will also then <clears throat> be given the compression that you so desperately need. Always remember your healthcare professional is there to support you. They will guide you on the recommendations for wearing your garment and they'll also guide you on any additional information that you may well need. But thank you so much for joining us on this Legs Matter Natter. Sarah, it's a challenge for everybody, isn't it? Trying to get garments on and trying to make sure that we wear them appropriately and how they should be. Have you got any other tips for us that we've missed, oh. maybe? No, I was going to ask you actually, Jane. <laughs> um, it, it is it is difficult. I think the thing with hosiery is that we need to be certainly we, when we you know as a clinician, um, when patients maybe had open ulceration and they had bandages on. I think it's the importance of talking about hosiery early on in in that treatment. Um, and to explain that their underlying condition will require sort of ongoing or, or lifelong compression. Definitely. 
I think sometimes it comes as a shock when you're say they think that you know people are healed and they're saying well you've healed me so why have I got to wear this hosiery so I think it's important that we have that conversation early on and you can then explore maybe some of the solutions for um, managing hosiery rather than leaving it right to the end. So obviously that's about people who've got ulceration. We know we use hosiery to prevent ulcers, uh, but also to manage swelling in the legs, don't we? Absolutely. So I think yeah. it's, um, I think we can then start looking at, you know, what is that person's ability to apply hosiery? Um, so you can start looking at solutions. I mean, I was going to ask you, you know, one of the common uh, problems that we came up against in practice was I can't get to my feet. Absolutely. I can't bend yeah. over, mm -hmm. uh, whether because people have got a bit of a tummy or whether it's just because they're, of their frailty, but they struggle to get to their feet to get their hosiery on. So have you got any sort of tips as to how people can manage that? Definitely. I mean, those rubber gloves that um, I showed on the video, they're a nice little tool to have because they allow you to grip the fabric and be able to move it into the correct position on the limb. But there's so many little devices and our next video that's on Legs Matter Natter um, highlights some of those about the um, sort of equipment that you can get to apply your hosiery with. So some of those simple things that we've got, like plastic bags you'll hear us talk about that will allow you, especially if there's no toes to your hosiery, uh, that's a bit more difficult if you've got toes on there, but it allows you to slip the, the garment over the leg. I think probably I've got a house full of boys and they all play football. And the first thing they do with their football socks is roll them up um, and try and put them on like we would our normal socks. Um, and a big lesson for me with our compression garments is don't crunch them all up and like you would your normal socks. Allow them to glide over your leg, would you say, Sarah, is a good way. Um, because yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I always uh, re sort of compare it to how my grandma used to teach us how to put our socks on, where you turn the the, the foot bit inside out. So That's you it. Yeah. then can roll it on to get the heel into position. Once you get that heel into position, the rest seems to come up quite well. But if you Absolutely. haven't done that bit, you struggle. Because That's the worst bit, isn't it, to get it over is the foot and the heel. Once Absolutely. you're over that bit, it, it does work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and it's um, because obviously they're designed to give that squeeze in effect. So they are obviously made in that way. Then clumping the fabric up to try and get it over your toes is, is a challenge. Just allow the garment to move onto the foot. And like you say, get the heel in. And then using the, the rubber gloves, it can help to um, reposition the garment and move that up the leg. But it is, but it is a challenge getting down to your feet and it's great. There's so many things out there. I bet you've got some great experience, Sarah, with the people using some um, devices, some um, application devices to help get those on. Yes, we, we've got to be flexible with, you know, what we use. And obviously some, some of these devices are on uh, a prescription that maybe people would be able to get a prescription. Others, people, you know, are... Um, they have to buy these these devices themselves but you know really it's about you know it's not one size fits all there's not one device that suits everybody so we have to offer the, those options to our patients um all that information needs to be out there this is what legs matters is all about so people can can look at, at the options available to them if they if they choose to to purchase those but you Absolutely. know sometimes a frame will work really work on some will work well on some people but others it doesn't so again we have to be flexible with with what's out there I think the trouble is is that certainly if people have got some swelling in their legs legs can be uncomfortable they can be tender um, and getting hosiery on can be uncomfortable we know that if we can get rid of that swelling in the legs the legs feel much better they're less painful and that's why we're doing this you know this is why Absolutely. we're encouraging people to use hosiery um, and that but, comes with the, the ease of getting it on, Sarah, isn't it? If you find a way that suits yeah. you and you can get that on, you're more likely to be able to feel confident. We've got a really great question here, actually, um, Sarah. What advice do you give for those that are struggling to get their compression reordered, remeasured with appointments at the lymphedema clinic not re readily available at the moment? So that's a really good question, isn't it? It's a challenge to us. 
Hey. It is, and and obviously there'll be there'll be different um, uh, approaches to how they're managing this problem at the moment across the country. I know that there are some areas that are providing sort of virtual consultations um, or email advice um, systems in place for people to to discuss the problems they've got. Um, it's really important that if you require new hosiery, you know, Absolutely. you're overdue, yeah. the longer that goes on, the, the, the higher the risk of your lymphedema becoming a problem again, because maybe your hosiery isn't giving you the compression that, that you require. All I can Absolutely. suggest is that, you know, you, you need to be looking at um, whether you can access them by email, um, uh, you, you know, you you need to maybe speak to your GP about absolutely. That's where I was going. The, the, the yeah, yeah. Uh, because um, just because we're in this situation, I know it's awful, but we we have to still provide services to protect people from the you know from the risks that maybe their conditions might might result in in some problems. So do speak to your GP if you feel you're not getting anywhere in terms of um, trying to get re replacement hosiery. That's what I would su suggest. I, I agree with that one. And, and I think that's really good advice because we're a big team, aren't we? Healthcare professionals, you know, multidisciplinary, lots of different people coming together. So your GP is one, one player in that. So definitely they can liaise with the lymphedema clinics and, and get you that prescription because it's so important, isn't it, that you that you absolutely, uh, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. You you mentioned Jane in uh, one of the the hints and tips is around uh, when you're applying your hosiery around you know jewelry or long yeah. fingernails. Also, do remember don't don't forget pets. Um, I've got yeah, three cats one. with very sharp claws and we know that um, a lot of people have dogs. The amount of patients I looked after whose hosiery frequently became laddered because of very friendly cat, uh, dogs or cats that they had on their lap. So just just uh, another sort of word of warning about that. Definitely. Or what I've got, I've got a puppy at home and they pull on them and pull holes in them, you know, in my own socks. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want any holes, any sort of like holes or any damage to the, the fabric. You definitely need to uh, be confident to go and get a new pair. Definitely. We won't be giving in the compression that you so, so much need for your limb if, if it's damaged in in any way at all. Um, have you got any I more? Liked yeah, yeah I, was just, I was just going to say, um, I, I like the, the reference to around, you know, how, how your hosiery should feel. Yeah. Um, and I think there was a, a reference to it feeling firm and supportive. Yes. And if it's feeling saggy, that it's probably not doing the job it, it should be. I absolutely would endorse that because the amount of patients that, um, that sort of I was involved in their care, that when I reassessed them and reordered their hosiery, they're like, oh, hang on a minute. This, this feels very different. You know, it feels tighter. Um, and it's around, we try not to work, use the word tight. We say firm and supportive. And it's trying Absolutely. to explain that if your hosiery, you can't feel it on your legs, you can't feel that support. It's likely not to be the right fit. If it's very loose and you think it's lovely, it's probably not doing you any favors. So it's it should be it should be firm and supportive, definitely. Yes, and absolutely, I I agree there. And I know this session today we've been touching on sort of like hosiery in the garment perspective, but obviously there's other elements, isn't there? There's um, wrap technologies that are like bandages with Velcro almost that you wrap around your leg. And I would like to share a little story that I had where one of my patients, um, I'd given all the advice about washing, and I forgot to say roll back the Velcro. So when she got it out of the washer, it was one big ball of velcro uh, like a puzzle uh, that we had to unwrap so if you've got a wrap technology system then yeah it's always advisable i learned the hard way to roll back those velcro bits isn't it sarah absolutely to yeah, stop yeah. It becoming a big ball there's, there's been a, a lovely comment here from hillary uh, who says she wears a, a pair of knee socks over the, her support hosiery to stop them being laddered brilliant little tip really that. good tip um, yeah like that definitely yeah. 
And I think, um, Hilary, you know, thank you for putting that question and well, that comment in there and sharing with others because people wearing hosiery are the best people that can share these things because you work some amazing ways out of, of coping. But obviously those um, little um, knee highs, they'll, they'll stop anything sort of rubbing on, on the garment itself and your trousers. And yeah, I love that one. What a great one to share. Has anybody got any, anybody out there got any other tips that uh, they'd like to share? Because those are so valuable, aren't they, Sarah? Because um, you are the people out there wearing um, the garments and can give the best, best support and advice. Definitely. I think, I think we need to also... Um... The, the bit about slippage as well. Um, I think one of the hints and tips was around each time, each day, making sure you push the, you fold your hosiery down and then pull it back up Absolutely. again. I used to use this sort of stretching it wide and then slight sort of uh, shear, not shearing as such that's so damaging your skin, but you need to take that slack out of the hosiery. Otherwise it does slip. Um, so, so that I think is really important. If you find that your, the hosiery is working its way down your leg, it will tourniquet and get sore. So it's the, it is so important to make sure it's in the right position. But also, you know, we're mainly talking here about below knee hosiery. We know that we have people with thigh length hosiery. Absolutely. And, you know, that can create its own challenges in getting it on properly, but the same principles would apply, uh, making sure that it's on correctly with no creases um, and, you know, the time of the day you put it on, etc. cetera. So, um, yeah, just, just be aware of that slippage because it can be uncomfortable if it's digging in. And also um, your prescriber of your hosiery, it, the measurements are really important as well. So if you find that it's not uh, when you first get it, it's not fitting right, then report that straight back. Because I remember spending a long time with a patient of mine and we got those measurements just right. And when we got it, we looked at it, we thought this is not going to fit, but it did perfectly. So it's spending the time with your clinician to get it measured properly so that it does fit and that you love wearing them and that they're comfortable um, because they make a difference when they when they fit well don't they Sarah? Absolutely they do and it goes back to that um, re-prescribing of hosiery you know we often have these conversations in practice around whose responsibility is it to in you know to, to prompt that sort of um the, the re-prescription, you know, you say you have a couple of pairs and it's about every sort of four to six months you might have them replaced. So often you might not be actively seeing your healthcare professional then because they've done their bit, your legs are lovely, you're into hosiery. So it's about, you know, looking at a way um, of reminding yourself that you need to get another pair of, of stockings um, or socks prescribed um uh, and just making sure that that's in your diary or, or whatever um uh, because Absolutely. it's not necessarily in all areas going to be prompted by your healthcare professional so it's about you know you making sure you schedule that for uh, booking an appointment to see your practice nurse for example or your lymphedema nurse to be uh, reassessed again remeasured and then uh, a new uh, pair of stockings prescribed like you would um, your normal socks, isn't it, Sarah, really? Yeah, you'd, yeah. You'd, uh, you'd replace those uh, regularly. I think um, as nurses, Sarah, we love an opportunity to talk skincare, don't we? And it's so important to, you know, obviously wash and um, dry your legs well in between your toes and, and obviously apply your emollients. And like we've given that advice, doing that at night, protect some of the fabrics. But your poor legs under these hosieries, they do need looking after, don't they? The skin needs needs loving absolutely I, i'm doing a session on skin tomorrow actually oh brilliant you, that's excellent put yourself on at half past little 12 pull, um, pull <laughs> but uh, absolutely and if you're in you know some people as you said are in their hosiery 24 7 because they haven't the ability to get their socks off or their stockings off at night um and um you know in my experience we used to have carers coming in maybe a couple of times a week to take them off uh, to wash that person's legs, to put the emollient on and then reapply a fresh pair. So we, we can't all take our hosiery off every, every night, for example. So it can get a little bit hot and sweaty between your toes, as you, as you said. So again, just check out, you know, your skin as well when, you're, when your hosiery is off. Just inspect your, your legs to make sure that nothing's going on in terms of skin breakdown or any infection. 
and moisturizers absolutely uh, really really essential and as you said if you can take your hosiery off at night it's a great time to put your emollient on so it soaks into your skin overnight uh, before you you know put your hosiery back on um just to say um uh, me with me clinical bit on and and, and um, emollients is some emollients are very greasy so as well as yes being damaging for the hosiery material itself because they often have a, a paraffin liquid paraffin within the the emollient is um it is a fire risk as well so just i have to say that is emollients you know if you're sitting close to a fire and you've got emollients on and maybe you've put too much on and it's within the the hosiery just be be careful because there it, it is a risk yeah Absolutely. And, you know, you're so right. Those, those bits of advice we pick up along the way are so important to remember, aren't they? I think my message out there is, is that we're in this together is caring for legs and we're here as healthcare professionals to support you. Um, and we want to, you know, answer your questions. So you know, communicate with us, let us know if things aren't fitting, things have changed. Um, you don't have to wait till your next appointment. Just, just let us know and let us get that a new pair, if that's what's needed, a new prescription, a reassessment, isn't it, Sarah? We're, we're in it together. Absolutely. And for you folks out there, you know, if if do, do talk to health professionals, um, you know, and the the companies that make our hosiery are are accessible for for feedback on on hosiery. I'm sure you would welcome that. Absolutely. Um, uh, but also, you know, on the webs webs the legs matter website there is a, a section within there that you can you know pass on information or request information and we're really good at signposting and forwarding that on to the right people so if there's something that you haven't got that would be useful for you in terms of information please tell us um you know we're listening and we'll do all we can to make that better and we'll know all the different tips that are out there, all the different devices to help you get these on, because that is, is one of the biggest challenges that, that faces us, Sarah, isn't it? We've got a question, Sarah, which will be good, I think, for you to answer. Which emollient would you recommend? And uh, that's an, always a nice one uh, to answer. Yes, yes. Um, so, Lorna, thank you for that. Um, try and uh, come to my session tomorrow, because we will talk about emollients. Just as, but just briefly... My rule of thumb really is, is, you know, you get three types of emollients, you, you main types, you get like a lotion, which is very light, uh, a cream, which is slightly greasier, and then you have uh, an ointment, which is very greasy. So really, it depends on your skin condition. I would say that if your skin is fairly okay, and it's not very dry and crusty, because we know some skin does, you know, um uh, uh that, that, you know you can get skin skin like that um i would say a cream probably for legs is 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 one of the the better emollients so i, I can't stipulate a brand um but all i would say is non-perfumed so more of a clinical emollient um go to your pharmacy they would be able to recommend um but yes you, you don't want any perfume in it because that's also um, interferes with what your your sort of skin barrier so keep it nice and bland and I would probably say on on legs if you haven't got very dry skin an emollient cream is probably sufficient but do try and join my session tomorrow if you can and I'm sure you'll be saying it on your session tomorrow Sarah it's 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 one that you that you like wearing I know um you know I'm a candidate you know I don't like things that are too greasy so the best one is the one that you're happy to use isn't it as well Definitely. absolutely yeah 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 um, but yeah, hopefully you'll have some people joining that that skincare because it comes together, doesn't it? Hosiery, good skincare, yeah, all is about yeah. looking after your legs, definitely. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's bringing us a, to a close on this session, Sarah, but it's been really great to share some hints and tips on caring for hosiery. Is there anything you'd like to add, Sarah, before we, we bring this session to a close? I don't think so. I think I think really just to sort of sum it up is that, you know, you've been prescribed your hosiery for a reason uh, to treat an underlying condition. And this is what Legs Matter is all about. It's about educating people to recognise maybe the condition that they have um, and and the treatment um, uh, that supports that condition. So all I would say is um, work closely with your health professional. 
um, because you know we need to find a solution for you that suits you because not all options suit everybody so um, it's important that you you have compression in, in with you know in some sort of way but yeah do work with the healthcare professional if you're not happy for some reason have that discussion because it needs to work for you definitely and it is about i know we've got a question there from alison that's about um garments fitting correctly um and it is about getting them to fit correctly on your limb and working so closely with your healthcare professional and and not thinking that you're nagging if if it's not right it's not right just keep keep going back and keep asking for that sort of reassessment review remeasure because once you get them right you'll love them won't you can I can I just um, make a, a, a sort of reply here to Alison yeah. around um, her condition and um, it, all I would say to you Alison is is that have a look on the program there are quite a few sessions around lymphedema and there's also a lipedema session as well um, I don't want to go into any details sort of live here but I I um, I, I do feel that you need to be dipping into the right session here to, so, so we can find a solution to get this right for you. Because clearly, you, you know, things aren't working at the moment in terms of what you're, you're currently receiving. So have a look on the, the program and see what you think would be the right session for you. I think it's more than just looking after your hosiery session that we've done just now. I think it's a bit more sort of complicated than that. So if that's okay with you, um, if you, you don't get any, any um, luck with the programs, you feel that none of them meets your needs, do email into Legs Matter and we'll try and signpost you to the right resources if that's okay. That's great, Sarah. That's a really useful response there for Alison. But um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you've got some hints and tips and, and we'll see you on our next sessions. But thank I'll you, everyone. You thank you.